Hey guys, Dr. Joel here. We're talking about gut health. We're getting into SIBO and CIFO. We're talking about uh, basically how to get rid of it, how to get rid of it naturally and for good. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so SIBO and CIFO, guys, these are acronyms. What is it? SIBO stands for small intestine bacterial overgrowth. CIFO stands for small intestine fungal overgrowth. Guys, these are diagnoses of conditions that can lead to a number of different digestive issues and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Chances are if you're watching this video one of two things is probably happening. Uh, number one, you've got digestive um, gut issues and you've kind of gone the standard route. You've seen your primary doctor, maybe you've been referred to a GI specialist and they're not really able to figure it out. Maybe you've had different treatment, different medications, Maybe you've had um, some different procedures done, still not able to figure it out. So you do research. <clears throat> your body's not getting to where it needs to be. Your gut's not healing and getting back to normal. You've done your research. You've come across these things. And now you came across this video. Uh, let's talk about this. SIBO and CIFO. Um, uh, maybe maybe you're, you've come across this diagnosis. Maybe you think you have it and you're just wanting more information. That's great as well. SIBO and CIFO, these are more of what we call um, uh, uh, maybe more of a functional or clinical diagnosis. Uh, you're not going to find this in a lot of um, different textbooks per se. I know there's a lot of doctors that would even deny that this is even a thing, which I don't understand. But essentially, we know there's millions of bacteria in the gut. There's fungus in the guts. A lot of that is normal and healthy. Um, the vast majority of it is, but it's when it gets out of control that you can start developing issues. So uh, you can have the bacteria either increase and become um, out of balance. You can have fungus grow and become out of balance. We're going to talk about basically how that happens, what contributes to that, and then basically we'll get into how to fix it. Now, signs and symptoms. If you have bloating, either with all foods or even just some foods, chances are you have one of these issues. Um, gas is also very common and the reason why these two are at the top of the list is because the biggest sign of uh, any kind of SIBO or CIFO issue is basically the the air, the gas, uh, the methane that these that these bacteria and fungi give off uh, it, they leave it for us to deal with so essentially if um, we have gas, that gas came from then, we have to deal with it. The bloating, same thing. There's just tons of air in our abdomen, it's not going anywhere, and that kind of thing. Now, if you have one of these conditions going on, um, you can have malabsorption or nutrient deficiency issues. The most common are gonna be with iron, B2, B12, um, and uh, sometimes you can have um, other deficiencies as well if you're just not absorbing things well. Um, you can have digestive pains. This is probably one of the most um, frustrating, most difficult ones because normally with digestive pains, normally doctors are wanting to do the advanced tests, the colonoscopy, the CTs, all these different things. Um, but really it's just an issue with the gut microbiota um, and the gut bacteria and fungi. So uh, you can have discomfort. A lot of times you'll have it 15 to 45 minutes after eating. That's kind of the general time frame for the small intestine. Uh, but in, in honesty, um, practicing and seeing a number of these different patients, uh, I can tell you that that number it varies widely um, from uh, when people, with, when they first eat within minutes, they can have issues to even uh, an hour or an hour and a half after they eat something, they can develop issues. But I would say in general, the 15 to 45 minute range is most common. Usually if you're eating something, you have issues with it within zero to like 15 minutes. Usually that's either gonna be a stomach issue or it's gonna be an immune system issue and your body's just reacting to it. Um, hormone imbalances um, are also a common sign and symptom of, this, um, of these conditions. A lot of women have different hormonal imbalances, toxic estrogens, things like that, nutrient deficiencies and it all goes back to their gut health. Um, and so a lot of times if you can balance out the gut health, if you can address these issues, um, a lot of times hormones 
will uh, really improve and they'll stay improved. Now, usually you have to detox things and you have to support things a little bit there, but as far as those root issues, a lot of it goes back to gut health. There's other systems that go back to our gut health that aren't mentioned here, but your thyroid, um, different sex hormones, and just overall, um, you know, sexual hormone balance, but testosterone, all these different things. A lot of this insulin resistance, there's huge ties with uh, insulin resistance and weight issues and the gut health, your brain health. Um, a lot of kids these days have ADD, ADHD. A lot of it goes back to our gut health. So if we can figure out what's going on with the gut, balance that out, that's going to help with so many different things that's going on uh, with our entire system. So what causes SIBO and CIFO? So we mentioned that it's bacteria and it's fungus. Um, with this kind of condition, um, essentially the idea is that it's an overgrowth, which means the bacteria or fungus is there and it just overgrows and becomes out of control. Now, a lot of times you can also have a bacteria or fungal infection and have all those same symptoms. And so there's not necessarily a specific diagnosis for that. A lot of those patients get grouped into the SIBO, CIFO uh, category. So nonetheless, um, what kinds of things can, uh, can, these, can, can contribute to the SIBO, CIFO? So poor nutrition is definitely a big one. If you're eating a lot of processed foods, inflammatory foods, guys, that's gonna cause all these kind of gut imbalances going to cause inflammation in your gut and that's that's a really important prerequisite that eventually will lead to SIBO and CIFO issues. Supplements can actually cause issues. So if you're supplementing with iron, if you're supplementing with B12, B2, maybe even cysteine, um, these issues can or these supplements can actually cause different imbalances with your gut because these are different things that certain bacteria and fungus will actually feed on. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't mention with the poor nutrition, but you also have things like sugar, things like gluten, processed dairy, all of those things, yes, they'll cause inflammation, but they can actually feed these infections and cause them to grow. Um, and with supplements, the other thing I left out there was the probiotics. Um, probiotics and prebiotics, things like inulin, oligo, um, oligosaccharides, uh, I'm blanking on that right now, but essentially prebiotics and probiotics can also contribute to these issues. So if you have an issue with this, the safe recommendation there is to take a break from those things. Take a break from, figure out your nutrition, and then also consider some of these other things. Synthetic chemicals, guys, this could be anything from medications to pesticides to um, to soaps, to all the chemicals that we're exposed to, air fresheners, all the things that we're exposed to um, can, can wreak havoc on your gut and actually change the biome and the environment in your gut and allow these different things to grow. I, very common, it's very common to see medications do that. If someone's been on something for such a long time, it'll literally change your gut environment to where you, now you have these different imbalances. Poor gallbladder function, this is a big one. Your gallbladder, a lot of people think and remember is important for fat absorption. And while that's true, the gallbladder uh, with the bile salts that it releases from the gallbladder is also really important with kind of neutralizing, kind of sterilizing um, the gut. And, and not in the way that it's killing everything, but it has very healthy and specific antimicrobial properties that helps keep the gut immune system supported. It helps keep the um, the the bad guys um, from growing, and it help keep, helps keep them in check, um, and that kind of thing. So, good gallbladder function is extremely important. I have some different videos and so forth on that, so make sure you check those out. Um, stress, chronic stress, guys. This is a killer for all things: digestion, hormones, sleep, mood, all these different things. Chronic stress, high stress hormones. Cortisol, norepinephrine, epinephrine, those things can really run down your gut over time. And it's really, really important to figure out what's going on with them. Do you need to increase protein? Because that's huge with stress. Do you need to get better sleep? Um, maybe there is some kind of medication. Maybe there is something you're eating that's just in, in, um, adding to the stress and, and that kind of thing. Obviously, you can have things in life, your job, family, home, all these things that can impact stress. So you want to make sure to kind of consider that with things. But these are very common things that lead to these bacteria and fungi growing 
and increasing. Now, if we're talking about an infection, which like I mentioned, you have a bacterial or fungus infection, a lot of time you'll have the same symptoms and you'll kind of be thrown into this group even though it's technically a little bit different. Um, if you have an infection, that can come from a number of things. Um, you know, you can get stuff overseas, you can get it by eating something that's not cooked well or cooked all the way. Um, um, just kind of depending on different things. Food that's gone bad, you can get stuff from that and things like that. Um, and so I'm primarily thinking of my, my friends that come, um, you know, they go overseas for a little bit, come back, they have some different digestive issues. Um, you know, we'll check for parasites and things like that, but we'll obviously check for, for different infections with that. So, um, so lots of different things here. Let's jump into this next picture here. Now, um, what, what are some more specific things? So we talk about poor nutrition. We mentioned the refined processed sugars. You got to cut those out because those are feeding these issues every single time. Gluten, you got to cut it out for a little bit. Processed dairy, processed foods in general. All of these things are going to make it so that your gut biome is less diverse. It's going to make it so these certain bacteria and fungus uh, dominate and, and increase. Um, supplements, guys, um, iron, B12, B2, prebiotics, fructooligosaccharides, that's probably what I was thinking about, inulin, and then probiotics. Um, I'm not saying these always cause issues because they don't always cause issues, but it's very common for me to find that in practice and see that, hey, you're taking this supplement, it's actually making this gut issue worse and we got to take a break from that. Now, a lot of times if you're deficient in these things in the first place, the reason why is actually because of some kind of infection. Bacteria, fungus, they love to feed on these things. So if you have low iron, you got to check out the infections. You got to look for a gut infection, see if there's any kind of infection in your blood and, and so forth. I have other kind of videos that kind of go over those things in more detail. Um, and if you guys ever have any questions, leave a comment, uh, shoot me a message, find my contact info. I'd love to help you or, or at least point you in the right direction. Um, a lot of people take prebiotics and probiotics. Guys, probiotics are thrown into so many things. It was roughly maybe 10 or so more or, or more years ago, I remember first hearing about probiotics. And, um, you know, I found some personal benefit from taking probiotics, but it seems like over the years that fat has just blown up and now they're in protein shakes. It's in all kinds of snacks and foods and drinks and it's all over the place and it's causing it can cause really significant gut issues with people in different imbalances. So now we have the synthetic chemicals. We talked about the air fresheners, uh, cleaners, even makeup is really important. You wanna make sure that your makeup is clean from all kinds of nasty chemicals and ingredients because you're absorbing that into your skin. That can lead to different gut issues over time. Medications, so um, proton pump inhibitors, antibiotics, these are obviously very common things. Um, that can disrupt your gut health and cause it lead to these different imbalances. Um, but I'd say there's a variety of others as well. I know a lot of patients that are on high blood pressure medications over time start to develop significant gut issues. Um, so you really just kind of want to consider all those things and really remember if it's synthetic, you know, it's not really going to be good for your body. God, God created our body to have and need very specific things, things that are natural things that he made and the man-made stuff um, is usually, uh, if not at first over time, is usually not going to support healing and health in general. Pesticide toxicity is really important as well, guys. Um, uh, it can basically pesticides, things like glyphosates, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. Roundup and glyphosates should be, in my uh, humble and calm opinion, they should be banned from our country because they are so, so toxic. Essentially, they're, the purpose of them is to, you know, kill things, right, and, and not allow bugs and things to grow on them. And here's the thing, when we're exposed to those, uh, when they're sprayed on our food, um, that gets into our system, and that is basically acting as an antibiotic. It basically kills our bacteria and causes different imbalances and can lead to things like SIBO and SIFO. Poor gut motility, we talked about this with gallbladder issues. Proper bile flow helps us to keep foods moving, helps keep the gut balanced by nourishing the good guys, keeping any bad guys at bay. So these are really important. I'd encourage you guys to consider these in your health and, and, uh, and anything here that may be contributing to your digestive gut issues. 
here's a little bit of a picture here as to uh, kind of some of the things that we already talked about. Now, uh, one of the things that I didn't mention, um, but it's very important, is in the bottom right corner here, uh, you have the inflammation, okay? So vegetable oils and hydrogenated oils, um, these are extremely important to consider when it comes to inflammation and gut disruption. So many foods, our snacks, our chips, um, eating out restaurant foods, so many of these different things are made with vegetable oils, canola, corn, sunflower, soybean, um, all of these nasty things, and they just cause so much inflammation with our system. It's really important to avoid those. Um, artificial chemicals, pesticides, natural flavors. Sugar is a big one that will absolutely feed this. Some people can have good, healthy gut health. You eat a ton of junk food and sugar over time, over a few weeks, a couple months, man, that will, that will definitely wreak havoc on your system. Infections, of course, parasites can make these conditions worse. Other bacteria and other fungus can contribute to these conditions, and of course, viruses can as well. And then we talked about stress. Guys, there's so much in this video. I don't wanna make this video insanely long, so we're gonna do two parts of this one. This is gonna be part one, where we get into kind of what's happening with the gut health, the problems with the gut health, and in part two, we're gonna get into how to fix these things, so definitely make sure you check that one out. Uh, guys, let's connect. Find us on social media. Feel free to schedule a free consultation or your first visit. Uh, reach out if you have any questions. We'd love to help you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I've enjoyed it. I hope you guys have. I hope you've gotten a lot of value out of it. Check out part two, guys. We'll see you over there.